everybody. Thank you for joining me for this month's master class. My name is Sinclair Walker, AKA the health nerd. I am a functional health practitioner, FDMP for short, and I am here to talk to you today about six hormone hacks for weight loss. Now we've done a couple of these master classes on weight loss. We've talked about hormones in each of them in different ways. We've talked about calories, we've talked about sleep, we've talked about exercise, we've talked about a lot of different things, but we haven't really dove really deep into hormones. And they're, they're very, very important. And I'll talk about why in just a second. Um, but I think that taking a lens from the hormonal aspect of weight loss is super important because it's usually not talked about, right? So you hear a lot about calories. You got to burn more calories than you're, uh, than you're consuming. You got to work out a ton, all that stuff, yada, yada, yada. We know all that, right? But we're not always taught how hormones and how our hormones inside of our body help or hinder our weight loss. Um, and so we're going to take a deep dive today into looking at how hormones can, like I said, help, hopefully help. We're going to talk a lot about how for your hormones uh, can help you um, achieve your weight loss. But we're also going to talk about um, how hormone imbalance can actually hinder your weight loss. Hello, Miss Julie. How are you doing today? Um, let me figure out how to pin. I'm doing great. Thank you. Happy to be here. Great, great, great. Happy to have you. Happy to have you. Let me figure out my... There we go. Okay. All right. So let's jump into it. Why am I talking about hormones? Let, let's start with that. Why are we talking about hormones? What are homo hormones? Anybody know? Because I, I, I truly didn't know until maybe a couple of months ago what hormones actually were. Um, hormones are chemical messengers that are floating around in your bloodstream, basically. And they actually regulate some part of the body's, you know, uh, of the body's most important processes. They're like little chemical messengers swimming around in your blood, telling your, your brain what to do, telling your heart what to do, telling your, uh, your lungs what to do, telling everything what to do, you know, letting them know this is the situation we're in and this is how we need to respond. Um, and so they're very, very critical to all of our body's processes. Um, and a really important thing about them and to thinking about weight, weight loss is that they can be either your biggest supporters or your biggest enemies of weight loss. And I say this because whether you are the person, I know I have been the person, or we all know someone who has eaten right and they've worked out and they did not have the results that maybe someone else did, right? All of our metabolisms are very unique. And so there are a lot of other factors aside from just calories in versus calories out that are going to determine your ability or inability to lose weight. Um, and hormone, hormone imbalance or balance is one of those things. Um, and so we'll talk about throughout this presentation what some of those hormones that affect your weight loss are and how we can hack them to be able to be more balanced so that they can actually help us lose weight. So let's get into the first one. Without further ado, let's talk about taking a daily 20-minute morning walk in the sunshine. Now, you may be like, that's very detailed. And I want to point out why I put this much detail into this first one. So this stimulates the production of vitamin D, which helps regulate hormone levels and promotes better sleep. So there's three key words that I want to point out in this first hack, and that is morning walk and sunshine. So let's start with sunshine. It's already bolded there for us, right? This is really the key here because sunshine, getting the rays, the rays of the sun physically touching our skin actually triggers the creation of vitamin D. That is how our body synthesizes vitamin D. We do get some vitamin D from our diet, but really the, our body's kind of most usable form of vitamin D comes when we have contact with the sun rays on our skin. Um, and a fun fact is those of us who have higher um, amounts of melanin actually need more sunshine than others. 
And the reason why that is, is melanin actually acts, it's a, it's a wonderful superpower, if you will. It actually acts as a sunscreen. Um, so that's good because it will protect us um, from, you know, harm, harm, sun, uh, sunburn, uh, things like that, that can be harmful from the sun. But what it also does it is it actually makes it so that we have to be out in the sun longer to absorb the amount of, of vitamin D that we need from the sun, if that makes sense. Yes, yes. Um, so we, and, and that's, that's, it's not common knowledge that, you know, this is one, this is the way that we synthesize vitamin D, but that folks with, with more melanin actually need more sunshine to get the same amount of vitamin D as others. And that's something really critical um, for us to realize is that we have to get outside, right? If you think about where we come from, right? You think about the motherland, there's a lot of sunshine there. So it makes sense, right? Because we, were, we, we are spending a lot of time in the sunshine, but now that we are, you know, we're in America, we're in a lot of concrete buildings. We have to be intentional that we're getting outside and getting that sunshine, okay? So that's the first keyword I wanted to point out. The second keyword is morning. And the reason why that's important is because getting those sun rays on your skin in the morning is part of what's called the circadian rhythm. That sounds really fancy, but all that means is that it's like the daily uh, your daily internal clock, if you will. And so that's what wakes you up in the morning and makes you sleepy when it goes, uh, when the sun goes down. Um, and that's called the circadian rhythm. There's a lot that happens in your body once it realizes what time of day it is, if you will. So giving your body the signal that, oh, the sun is out, right? The sun is out you feel the rays on your sunshine, that lets your body know about what time of day it is. Our bodies are smart. They can figure that out. And so what that does is that makes it so that later on in the evening, when the sun comes down, it now knows, okay, I don't feel the sun rays anymore. Okay. That means the sun is down. It's time to uproot melatonin. And melatonin is the hormone that makes us tired. And that is why we are Dineral, I hope I'm saying that correctly, but the opposite of nocturnal, right? Where we're awake in the day and asleep at night. That is part of why that is, is the case. And that's actually a healthy response. It is healthy for you to feel awake during the day and feel tired once the sun goes down. Um, and then the last key word I wanted to talk about here is walk. You can theoretically do this and just sit in the sun and maybe meditate or breathe and still get the benefits of the vitamin D, but I'm all about efficiency. So why not walk while you're doing this? You can make this a walking meditation and get that sun ray in while getting some movement in. Walking is a great fat burning exercise. I don't care what anybody says. Walking is a great fat burning exercise. Um, sometimes we think we have to be working out very intensely to work to, you know, uh, burn some of the fat. Walking is what our bodies were meant to do, and it is a great fat burning exercise. So why not get in some extra movement in while you're soaking in that vitamin D? Okay, so that is hormone hack number one. Take a daily 20 minute morning walk in the sunshine. The last thing before I move on to this is I did put 20 minutes for a reason as well. And that's because they say on, on average, a person needs about 15 minutes um, to, of sunshine to actually get the amount of vitamin D needed. But as I mentioned here, I know a lot of my folks, a lot of my, my communities of color, um, are the ones that support us. So that's why I upped it to 20, because I know a lot of you walk, uh, you know, listening, you may have those higher amounts of melanin. And so I'm speaking to you. We need 20 minutes. Okay. If the average person needs 15, we need to make sure that we're getting our 20 so that we can be getting all of the vitamin D that our bodies need. Okay. Moving on to hack Number two. Number two is practice your preferred form of meditation for 10 minutes each day. And I do mean each day, at least Monday through Friday or whenever your normal work schedule is, but really you want to do this every day. And what this does is triggers the rest and digest mode and lowers cortisol levels. So another word for another way to say, a fancy way to say rest and digest mode is the parasympathetic nervous system. And it's basically what tells the body, I'm safe, it's okay, we're calm, you can relax. Um, and this system that basically tells us either go or stop is a very um, 
binary system, if you will. There's no in-between. You're either in go mode or you're in stop mode. So you have to really be intentional about telling your body, it's okay, I'm safe, we can, we can relax, okay? And so one of the ways that you can do that is meditation. It's actually one of the most effective ways, in my opinion, and a lot of the studies show, to really trigger that parasympathetic nervous system and let the body know we can, we can stay calm, we can bring the heart rate down, we can bring the blood pressure, de- pressure down, we can slow the breathing, you can do all of these things that naturally happen when you're in a safe space. Is there a best uh, question from Julie is, is there a best time of day to meditate? So that is arguably yes, but I do like to say like everything is individualized, but I will say, and from some of the research that I do is that the morning is the best time to meditate. And the reason why I say that is because cortisol, the stress hormone um, is highest in the morning. That's actually what wakes you up from your sleep. It has a waking response. Um, And so if it's highest in the morning, if you really get a handle to kind of bring it down in the morning, um, it it kind of sets the precedent for the day that, okay, we're good. You know, for the rest of the day, the the levels of your cortisol will be a little bit more um, balanced than if they they start in the day. And and again, if you're going to meditate any time of day is, you know, is, is appropriate. Uh, my thing is just get it in when you can. But if you're looking for the optimal time, I would say it's in the morning because that's when the cortisol levels are already the highest. So again, you can bring them down in the morning. It really sets the tone for the rest of the day that we're in rest and digest mode. Great question. Um, and I do say your preferred uh, form of meditation because I think meditation is a, it's a kind of a buzzword right now um, that a lot of people are throwing around and it can mean something different to everybody. Um, so when I say meditation, I mean, whatever you, activity you do or you practice that puts you in that calm mode, right? When things are crazy, what do you want to go run and do? For me, it may be a bath. It may be getting a massage. It may be just a quiet walk or just silence. Those are all forms and breathing. Breathing is my saving grace. Breathing exercises are amazing. And we'll actually practice one at the end if we have some time. I'll, I'll show you my favorite called box breaths. Um, but meditation, whatever your form, your preferred form of meditation, that could be painting. Again, that could be a bath. That could be talking to a friend, a non-drama bringing friend. Um, and, you know, just make sure that you incorporate it on a daily basis. The last thing I'll talk about here before we kind of move on is that going back to the cortisol, and that is a, I mentioned it's a stress hormone. And the reason why we want to keep the stress hormone at bay is because cortisol being able to run amok and, and, you know, release whenever it wants to all the time and be high all the time is going to cause a lot of issues, not only with your overall health, but it is actually going to make it a lot harder to lose weight. And that comes down to the the idea that when our bodies are in survival mode, which is basically what your body, it goes into when cortisol levels are high, when you're stressed, your your body doesn't know whether you're being chased by a saber tooth tiger or whether you just have a stressful meeting coming up for work. It doesn't know the difference. It just knows you're experiencing stress. And so it goes into what's called fight or flight mode or survival mode. And the last thing it wants to do in that survival mode is get rid of the food that it has stored for for later. Okay. And that's AKA fat. Okay. That's what fat basically is. It is your body, you know, storing some leftovers for a rainy day when there may not be food available. Um, And so that's what fat is on your body. It's, it's storage. Um, and the last thing that your body wants to do when it's in survival mode is let go of the storage that it has held on onto for a rainy day, because this is that rainy day in its, in its mind. Um, so it's very important to make sure that we're keeping our cortisol levels um, balanced throughout the day, that they're not staying high. You know, it's inevitable that, you know, maybe you see someone at work that, you know, you don't like and your cortisol levels may raise. <laughs> We've all been there. But, you know, it's, it's just important to make sure that we bring them back down and they don't stay high throughout the whole day because that's, it can lead to just exhaustion. And I've been there. It's, it's rough. Okay. So moving on to hack number three. Number three, 
sync your movement practice with your menstrual cycle. Um, and this basically allows for maximum benefit without burnout. Um, I don't, I don't know if you've experienced it, but I've definitely experienced it where you work out so much, you work out, you work out, and you just reach a point where you're like, I cannot anymore. I need a break. I'm burnt out. Um, and you know, it can happen during some periods of the month more frequently than others. And I'll talk about that. We'll actually go through why that is in a second, um, on the next slide. But this is also very important because when we're thinking about the, uh, the lens of weight loss, um, almost everybody's first instinct is I need to start working out. Um, you know, I need to get to the gym. I need to be working out an hour or two each day. I need to be burning more calories. And that's where everybody goes. And that is partially true, right? Movement is a part of any, um, any healthy journey, but especially a weight loss journey. You do have to get out and move your body. But it's important to not overdo it, which can be very easy um, when, when you are doing like a high intensity workout when your body is craving something really low intensity. Um, that can, what can, that, that can actually do is actually trigger a stress response, right? So exercise, although it can be a stress, stress uh, reliever for some folks, if done in, in the wrong time or done, um, you know, too intensely for what the body is ready for at that moment, actually, it can actually trigger a stress response. And so again, your body doesn't know this is something intentional that you're doing to yourself. All it knows is that you're trying to lift something really heavy and it, it's trying to increase cortisol. It's trying to do all of these things in your body to help you accomplish that goal. That could actually be hindering you. That could actually be, again, putting your causing a hormonal imbalance that is going to make it hard for your body to release the fat. As I mentioned a second ago, when your body is really in that that hype, that hyper stressed state, it's not going to want to let go of the fat. So if you're already in a situation where maybe you have a stressful job or you're in a stressful relationship and now you're working out intensely every single day, you're only putting yourself further in that stress state and making it harder for you to actually release that fat. Because again, your body's like, I got to hold on to it. I don't know when we're going to eat again. I don't know what's going on. We're in survival mode. I'm not, I'm not letting go of this fat. That's what your body is saying. So you have to let your body know, you have to give your body those signals and those cues that it is okay to release the fat. We're good. We got enough food. Um, so you may be asking yourself, how do I sync my movement to my menstrual cycle? What does that mean? I'm going to get to that. So let's actually look at the, uh, the female uh, menstrual cycle um, in a given month. And now, mind you, this is a very high overview, and it is like, these are average numbers. It is, each woman's cycle is very individualized, right? The length of your cycle, the length of each phase is going to be different for each woman, and the uh, symptoms or, you know, balances of your hormones is also going to be individualized. But this is, in general, the different phases that we go through in each month and how you can kind of tailor your exercise to actually um, match up with where your body is at during that given month. So day one, menstrual cycle. This is when your period actually starts. And so I do say this varies a little bit because every woman's period experience is very different, right? They, there are some folks who are fighting cramps and they're just really miserable during that week. That's their reality. And there are other folks where maybe they're just spotting a little bit and they don't really have any other symptoms. So they may be able to do their regular, uh, you know, exercise routine. Um, but in general, go light uh, with exercise um, just because your body's already going through a lot. Um, so this may be a good time to focus on walking or some body weight exercises, um, things that don't put too much stress on the body. Okay. So that is like day one through seven, five, three, eight, whatever, you know, however long your menstrual cycle lasts, your period, however long your period is here, this is when you want to focus on that. The next phase, the follicular phase, um, this is when you actually start to see the hormone levels increasing. So you're going to have increased energy. Um, and so this is actually a good time to work on speed and power. Okay. So you can do your HIIT, a high intensity interval training, weightlifting. This is the time to challenge yourself. Like, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to max out. I'm going to go for my personal best. 
this is the time to do it because your body is aligned with your, your desires. Okay. If you tried to do this during the late luteal phase, you might find it a lot more difficult than during the follicular, follicular phase. Um, the next phase is the ovulation. Um, and so this technically is only happening for one day, but if you wanted to, to it, it is kind of like a phase as well. Um, so this is day 14 through 21, roughly. Um, and this is when you want to focus on endurance and strength. Um, so you can really want to put focus on your cool downs as well. So don't just go all out, go all out and then walk out the door or, you know, go to your next activity. Make sure that you are budgeting in a good amount of time to do a cool down, which means just allowing the heart rate to come back down, allowing the muscles to cool off before you go into your next activity. Okay. It's going to be important. Um, so this may be an, a good time for a spin class or a, some resistance training. Um, so if you've got resistance bands are really hot right now, um, those are a great thing to incorporate during this, um, this time of your menstrual cycle. And the last phase here, we've got the luteal phase. And this is really when hormone levels are at their lowest. Um, and that's why this is typically when you may, a lot of women may be experiencing PMS, you know, a lot of the symptoms, you may be a little bit moody, you may have, have some acne, you may have a little bit of cramping starting to come, um, and you may be a little bit more sensitive to stress as well. And so this is why mobility and recovery are going to be important to focus during this time. Basically, that means scale back the intensity. This is probably not when you want to go and try to do your personal best if you have control of that. Um, maybe some yoga, you know, something that's really just, you know, working on the muscles, working on extending the joints, working on just joint health, um, but nothing too intense. Um, and then functional mobility. Um, I'm a huge fan of uh, functional mobility, animal flow, basically like body weight things on the floor where you're just using your own body weight, your own muscles to um, really kind of activate different muscles that you maybe don't activate on a regular basis. I really love these types of exercise. And I think that the late luteal phase, right before the cycle starts all over, right before your period comes again, that's something, a great thing to focus on during this time. Okay. So hopefully that puts a little bit more clarity to how you can sync your movement practice or your exercising to your menstrual cycle to allow it to actually uh, help you um, and, and not feel like your body is fighting you, right? Our bodies never fight us, but we just have to learn our bodies and learn how to work with them to accomplish our goals. Okay. So I'm going to pause here and ask if there are any more questions from anybody. Um, if not, we're, we're going to go. We're about halfway done through our hacks. So we got three more. They're juicy. They're juicy. Um, no questions. Wonderful. Wonderful. Let's move right along. Super informative. Informative. Thank you. I'm happy. That's what I'm here for. Okay. So hack number four. Incorporate quality. I'll talk about why I say quality in a second quality protein and fat in every meal. Um, now these, I, I actually put three different reasons because it's so important. <laughs> um, so one, incorporating pro a quality protein and fat in every meal is going to increase your feeling of fullness or sati satiety um, after your meals. So I don't know if you've, uh, if you've ever had the experience where you eat maybe a salad or something, something that probably didn't have a lot of protein or fat in it, or maybe you drink a smoothie again, that was just like all fruits and vegetables and you drink it. And then like an hour or two later, you're hungry again. That's a red flag, right? Something you ate didn't, it didn't really satiate you. You should be good for at least three to four hours after you eat, if you're eating the right things. And protein and fat are two of the things that make you feel the most satiated. And that's because they actually trigger another hormone, right? We're talking about hormones here called uh, leptin. Now, leptin is the satiety hormone, which basically that's the hormone that lets you know I'm full and it's okay to stop eating. Um, whereas ghrelin, even the name sounds very aggressive, like, feed me. Um, <laughs> ghrelin is the hunger hormone. And so it's important to keep these two balanced so that when you're going throughout the day, you're not like ravenous 
for food, right? You want to be, you want to be full. You want to be satiated. Um, you want to feel like I don't need to eat anything right now, right? That's the ideal place to be. I don't think anybody wants to walk around hungry. That sounds terrible. Um, another reason why you want to incorporate protein and fat is that it improves your insulin sensitivity. So insulin is another hormone. And I don't want to dive too deep into this because I can go into a rabbit hole. But in a very high level, insulin is responsible for bringing the glucose or the sugar that is absorbed by your body to the cells so that it can be used for energy, either used for energy or stored later again for, for you know, a rainy day when there's not energy available, readily available. Um, and you want to be sensitive to insul insulin, which means when you eat something and your, your glucose enters your bloodstream, you want insulin to be like, oh, okay, it's my turn. It's my turn to, to rock. It's my, you know, it's my turn to get, my, get the job done. It's my turn to go grab the glucose and bring it to the cells. It's my time to shine. That's what you want to happen. And you also want, after it grabs the glucose and it comes to the cells and it's knocking on the door, you want the cell to be able to hear it and be like, oh, hey, that's my pal insulin. Come on in, right? That's what happens in a healthy insulin sensitive kind of regime. What can happen over, over time if we're not eating balanced meals and just with unhealthy habits in general, is that we become insulin resistant. And that can mean that either, for, for, the, for the most part, what it means is that basically when insulin is knocking on the door of, of the cell saying, hey, I have some sugar for you, they're, they're like, do you hear that? No, no, I don't hear anything either. And they go about their day. And then insulin's just left out in the, in the bloodstream, like, hey, what's happening? Um, so that's what's called insulin resistance. And that can be dangerous because it can cause um, blood sugar issues basically down the road. So you want to remain insulin sensitive. Um, and so one of the ways you can keep that is your sensitivity is by incorporating high uh, protein and fat in each meal. And then the last thing is that it provides building blocks for your hormones. Um, protein is one of the building, block, building blocks that actually uh, help you form and create new hormones in your bodies. So it's very important to incorporate a good amount of protein um, so that you have the building blocks to actually make the hormones in your body. Um, so let me go back to the word quality that I mentioned at the beginning. When I say quality, I mean whatever form of protein you're getting, just make sure that it's top notch and it doesn't have added things to it that are going to hinder the good things that protein does for the body. So for example, if, you're, if you eat chicken, if that's one of your main things of, of protein, I think it's, it's a pretty common one, right? You wanna make sure that as much as possible, you're eating some organic pasture-raised chicken. And the reason why I say that is because when you do that, you can eat your chicken knowing that it doesn't have added hormones. And that can be dangerous because we already have the hormones that we need, right? And adding hormones from another animal are, can, can be a disruptor for the body and can actually um, kind of overload, overload the body and cause an imbalance. Um, so we don't want you know, added hormones that the chicken has taken. Um, we don't want antibiotics that the chicken has been fed either. And that's typically done in the industry to fatten the chickens up. <laughs> and that's a whole nother masterclass that I won't go into, but um, you want to be be careful to also not get chicken that is has antibiotics and has been fed antibiotics because if the chicken ate it, you're also eating it. And um, that can be dangerous to consume antibiotics when they're not actually needed um, because it can just really destroy your gut bacteria. Um, it doesn't just, just, just destroy the bad bacteria. It also destroys the good bacteria. So it should only be used in an absolutely necessary situation. Okay, I think I've I think I've harped on protein and fat for for enough. But um, I think the last thing that I'll say about it is another big reason why I say protein and fat is because when you look at the calories in versus calories out approach, you may want to limit the amount of fat that you're that you're consuming because it does technically have the most amount of calories per gram of fat. But that doesn't mean that it is going to make you gain weight if you eat fat. It is absolutely necessary to have fat in your diet. It's for the brain. It's for the body. It is absolutely necessary. So that's why I'm personally not a huge fan of counting calories because then you can start to 
do some wonky things with your diet that won't actually be conducive to better health. It may get you some, you know, some weight loss in the interim, in the, uh, you know, the immediate, but it may not get you um, health and weight loss for the future. So keep that in mind. Moving on. To hack number five, we are almost done, is to incorporate an adrenal support supplement. Um, I do recommend on a daily basis. So this improves the body's ability to deal with stress. Um, so as I mentioned earlier, um, the cortisol, the stress hormone, when that is released, it sets off a whole cascade of reactions within the body. One of them being, um, you know, it increases your heart rate, it increases your blood pressure, it increases your breath. It gets you ready to either fight or flight, which means fight for your life or run and get the heck up out of there, right? Those are the two things that it's kind of pre uh, preparing you to do. Um, and so what you want to do, it, it, it's good to have that response. The problem is you just don't want to be in that mode all the time because now you're just walking around with higher blood pressure, um, with an elevated heart rate and with, you know, breathing more heavily when it's not necessary. If you're just sitting in the office, it's not necessary to be in that mode because you are in a relatively safe environment, depending on where you work. Um, so it's important to, again, to not only let your body know that it is safe, but it's also to, important to help the body out in its ability to actually deal with the stress. So an adrenal support supplement is a great thing to add to a balanced diet. I'm always an advocate of food first, so make sure that you do have a balanced diet. But this is a great thing to add to your diet to supplement and improve your body's ability to deal with the stress. So when you perceive something as stressful, whether it's dropping your phone on its face, come on, we all know that that's a stressful thing. That little heart attack you get when you drop your phone, that's stress. And your brain doesn't know the difference. <laughs> we have all been there. Um, when that happens, right, you, you, you feel that like sink in your stomach, right? It's not even something that you consciously do. It just happens. Um, there are, like I said, a whole bunch of things that happen in your body. And what you want to do is help your body's ability to be like, okay, so we need to do this. And then we need to do that. And then, okay, all right, ghrelin, you're doing your thing. Okay, adrenaline, you're doing your thing. Okay, right? It basically just facilitates the body's ability to deal with stress in an efficient manner. And not just like, oh my God, we've dropped our phone. What are we going to do? Like if you think about a hormone imbalance, that's probably what my hormones were doing and my, my cortisol levels and everything was doing a couple months ago before I really incorporated meditation on a daily basis. I'm pretty sure as my brain was, my body was just freaking out, right? But incorporating these types of supplements that are called adaptogens, which I'll go on, go to go over in the next slide, um, can help the body be like, okay, we're experiencing some stress. We know what to do, X, Y, and Z, okay? So that's why an adaptogen is a great thing to... Um, to incorporate, because again, even if you are dealing with the stress, your body's ability to, you're experiencing the stress, your body's ability to actually cope with it is going to improve. So I don't have a specific supplement that I'm going to recommend here, but I have a couple of ingredients that are typically in really uh, effective uh, adrenal support or adaptogenic um, uh, support uh, supplements. So these are a couple of them. So if you want to go find one, um, make sure that they incorporate some of these, some of these um, ingredients. And it's also important that it doesn't incorporate a whole bunch of other things that are not on this list or that you don't even know what they are, right? If it's got, okay, it's got all of these things, but it's also got corta, oxy, cosy, supple, uh, whatever, some chemical name that you've never heard of before or that doesn't belong in the body, it's probably not going to be conducive. Um, so you want to find something that is as natural as possible, um, preferably like a whole foods based supplement um, where it's ta they've taken these ingredients, they've minimally processed them and put it into a, like a, a powder of some sort. Sometimes they put it into capsules. Sometimes they put it into just a little pouch that you can pour to some water whatever is going to suit your fancy, that these are some great um, supplement or ingredients to be incorporated into a good adrenal support um, supplement. 
So ashwagandha, holy basil, rhodiola, licorice root, schizandra, cordyceps mushrooms, and reishi mushroom. Um, no, these are not psychedelic mushrooms. These are medicinal mushrooms. Um, but these are great things, adaptogens that, again, help your body adapt to the stress that it is experiencing. Okay. So very important to incorporate one of these supplements, regardless of what type of job you have, what type of, um, you know, what your relationships are, are like, because just living in this world, right, we are coming out of a, hopefully a global pandemic. So anybody in the world right now is going to be experiencing some type of stress with today's society, with today's worries and things that we have going on, there's always going to be some form of stress that we're dealing with that our bodies are still adapting to. Um, and so it's important to help them out by, you know, um, incorporating uh, an adrenal support supplement. Okay. And the last hack. That was my version of a drum roll. Um, this is to go to sleep by 10 p.m. Studies show that adults get the best deep sleep between the hours of 10 p.m. and 2 a.m. And this has to do with the circadian rhythm that I talked about earlier. Circadian rhythm is basically the body's internal clock that says, okay, it's time to wake up. Okay, it's time to eat. Okay, it's time to go to sleep. Oh, it's time to wake up again. Oh, time to eat again. Oh, it's time to go to sleep. And a whole bunch of other things. But <laughs> to simplify it, it's the body's internal clock that tells it what what to do based on what time of day it is, right? There's certain times of day when your body is detoxing. There's certain times of day when your body is filing its memories from the day, right? A lot of this stuff happens when you're sleeping. So if you're not giving yourself adequate amount of sleep, then you're not setting yourself up for success the next day and the day after that, okay? So there's actually, uh, if you were, if you think about it like this, an hour of sleep, from the, from the hours of 10 p.m. to 2 a.m. is almost equivalent to two hours of sleep from 2 a.m. for the rest of the day. That's how much like that, that, that four hour window really does make a difference. So if you were to go to sleep from 10 p.m. to 6 a.m., right? You're getting your eight hours of sleep. It's probably going to be a much more restful eight hours of sleep than a 2 a.m. to 10 a.m still eight hours, right? There should be no difference. But because you've missed that critical window of time when your body is expecting to be asleep, when your melatonin levels are expected to be elevated, right? Um, then you're going to have some consequences the next day. One of those things can be your, horm your uh, hunger hormone, ghrelin, that I mentioned earlier. One of the things that, doesn't, that, hap that is triggered when your body does not get the right amount of sleep is that ghrelin sounds off a lot earlier in the day. So I don't know if you've ever experienced this. Let me know in the comments if you experienced this. You have a terrible night of sleep and you wake up ravenous. It's like, oh my goodness, I need pancakes. I need biscuits. I need, I need it all because I'm starving. Um, <laughs> so if you've experienced that, there's a reason, right? Because you did not have a good night's sleep, you didn't give your body the time to recharge so that it can wake up and, you know, take on the day. It's like, uh, I'm still tired. So it needs, it's looking, your body is looking for a form of energy in some way. So if you're not asleep, then it's going to look for that energy in the form of food. So that is the body's natural response when you're, again, you did not get a good night's sleep, when it didn't get, when it doesn't feel like, oh, I'm ready for the day. It's going to trigger the ghrelin the hunger hormone a lot earlier in the day because it's going to, your body is again, just, it's just looking for energy. It's just trying to, it's trying to look for energy, to just get by, to just get through the day, right? It's like, well, you didn't, you didn't give me the sleep I needed. So you need to give me some food. Otherwise I'm about to crash. Okay. So that's what your body is, is doing. It is just looking for energy so that it can do what it needs to do. It can keep all of its bodily processes going. Um, and so that's why you tend to be a little bit hungrier on the days after you have not, you've got a, a bad night of sleep or haven't slept as well. Um, so 
going to sleep by 10 p.m. is going to increase the likelihood that you're going to get a better night's sleep because you're incorporating that four hour window where the deep sleep is going to be uh, the best, okay? And so the uh, ghrelin, leptin, those are just a few of the hormones that are affected with sleep. You also have the growth hormone, um, which you may be thinking like, if I'm trying to lose weight, why am I, I, why do I need to worry about the growth hormone? Because a lot of times when you're trying to lose weight, you're also trying to tone up or trying to increase your muscle at the same time. And that involves the human growth hormone. So that is also a critical time when the human growth, growth hormone is doing its thing in your body and actually repairing tissues and building muscle. So you need to make sure you're giving yourself that time. And then of course there's insulin. All of these hormones are affected by good sleep or bad sleep. So that's why you wanna make sure that you're getting to sleep uh, by 10 p.m. so you can get a good night's sleep. All of your hormones can be happy and you can wake up not ravenous. <laughs> You can wake up with happy hormones that are going to help you lose weight. That's what we want here, right? So those are the six hormone hacks for weight loss. We've covered things for sleep. We've covered stress. We've covered food. We've covered a lot of different, we've covered movement, right? We've covered a lot of different topics that are have nothing to do with like the amount of calories you're eating or you know how many calories you're burning because it's not always about that. It really is about having a, a holistically and overall healthy body with happy hormones that can help you facilitate fat loss. Um, and and you know if you've ever been in the situation where again you are doing all of the things quote unquote right, right? You're cutting the calories, you're exercising, and you're not seeing the weight fall off like you want to or like you expect it to. It could be because your hormones are imbalanced in one of the ways we just discussed. It could be because you're extra stressed out, or it could be because, um, yeah, you just have a lot on your mind, right? And you're in that hyper stress state. It could be because you didn't get a good night's sleep or you haven't been getting a good night's sleep. So your hormones aren't able to stay balanced and you're eating more throughout the day without even realizing it because, again, that balance is off, right? So you're waking up with ghrelin off the charts and eating so much throughout the day. Um, so hopefully those, you know, shined, shined a light on something that, something new. Hopefully you learned something new from one of those six hacks or all of the six hacks. Um, but I'm going to open it up for any more questions about any of the six, of the six uh, hormone hacks or weight loss in general that anybody has. Um, if not, I do have one that was submitted. And we're doing, we're doing pretty, pretty decent on time. I'm really trying my best not to <laughs> ramble <laughs> with each of these slides. But the one uh, question that we did have submitted is how does your hormone, um, how do your hormones affect your energy? Um, and this is a very good question. And so I'll answer this science, you know, scientifically, but I'll also answer it from my personal experience. Um, and this is going back to, there's a lot of different ways to explain it, but I'm going to talk about it from the, the lens of cortisol, the stress hormone. Um, when your body starts experiencing stress, um, there's a couple different phases that you go through. When it's new stress, right? You're, maybe you were not really stressed before and now you've kind of maybe you started a new job or again, you're in a, a relationship and something's going on and you're experiencing that stress. You're going to go through this a phase at the beginning, uh, which, you know, FDN, we call it the acute phase. And that's when your body, your cortisol levels are going to increase because your body is uh, dealing with this stress and responding accordingly, right? So it's like, okay, we're stressed out. So let's go ahead and increase the heart rate. Let's go ahead and increase the blood pressure. Let's go ahead and, you know, increase or uh, speed up the breathing. Let's get ready to fight or flight. And again, if it's, if it's something like a stressful job, you got to go to that job every single day. So you're probably going to stay in that state for some time, if you're, especially if you're not practicing some type of stress management you know, technique. Um, so your body goes into that state at first. Then it goes into what we call the compensatory phase, where your body is still trying to compensate. That's where the word comes from. Compensate for the amount of stress that you're under. Um, and so the other key part about this is that the amount of cortisol that your body actually has to pump out to get ready for that fight or flight mode starts to decrease. 
And so in this phase, if you were to go to the doctor or if you were to work with a practitioner like me, we'd run your, your hormone panel, they actually might look normal. Your cortisol levels might actually look normal. The difference is this is the maximum amount of cortisol that your body is able to produce. Where before you were able, you were up here and you were able to produce twice as much cortisol, right? Because your body was, it was new stress. Your body still had a lot of reserves to pump out. But now you've been stressed for like a month and this is just arbitrary numbers. But let's say you've been stressed for like a month. You see you're at this job, you're still there. It, the stress has not let up. And so now your body's only able to produce this much, right? We're about halfway down. Um, even though you're still expressing that, uh, experiencing that stress. And if it keeps going, then you would get into what's called the exhaustive phase, which is exactly what it sounds like. It's exhausting. Your body is tapped out. Your body's ability to adapt to the stress is tanking. It's not able to adapt to it as quickly. Um, and, you know, this can, it, 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 it is exhausting. It feels exhausting. And if you're wondering why I'm so passionate about this, <laughs> I was there. Um, so when I, I did a hormone stress and hormone panel on myself in, I think, September of last year, and I, at the age of 27, was in the exhaustive phase. And I was like, what? I was partially shocked, but then I, at the same time, after I thought about it, I was not because I was exhausted all the time. And if you know my story, you know that I actually took the leap and, and quit my job shortly after that. Um, and that's kind of because of the wake up call that 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 was one of the reasons. One of the one of the reasons why I did it is I just had a wake up call. Like I'm 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 at this job and I'm already stressed to the point of exhaustion. It's only been five years of my career. Where is this going to go after 25 years? Right. So um, that's something that I was experiencing. And I can, yeah, I can tell you it's exhausting. Um, it's just you wake up exhausted. Um, and, you know, that can be one of the things that affects your energy level. So if, if this sounds like, oh, yeah, that sounds like me, then you, you may be, you may be where I was, where your cortisol levels, you're just in a stress state to the point where your cortisol levels have decreased so much that they're not able to even, um, you know, get you up in the morning quite like they did before. Um, like I mentioned, cortisol has a, a waking response, right? It, it's got an energizing response because it's meant to either uh, help you fight or flight. Um, but eventually your body's ability to do either of those things dwindles. Um, so that's why it's important to incorporate a stress management practice. My levels are up for anybody who's wondering. So we're on our way, but uh, it's important to, that. that is one of the ways that your hormone levels can affect your energy is that cortisol response, your stress response. Okay. Are all hacks minus the period one just for women? No, actually, I think that's probably the only one that would apply just for women. And I'm going to go through just so I make sure I'm not saying something incorrect. So let's see. We've got the walk. That has nothing to do with uh, women or men. That is uh, both, right? Both benefit from that. Same thing with meditation. Um, this one, the menstrual cycle specifically for women. Number four was protein and fat. Doesn't matter which, uh, how you identify, that's going to uh, uh, be a factor. And then adrenal support as well. Um, yeah, so just that one, that one hack has to is is kind of women specific. All of the others are, um, if you are a human, those apply to you, right? Because um, you know we do have a lot of differences, you know, between different genders, um, but we also have a lot of similarities. And so for all of the other hacks, um, those can apply to men as well. Okay. Any other questions out there? If not, I do. We do have a couple uh, a couple minutes, so I just want to go over um, box breaths. I mentioned at the beginning that I was going to go over my favorite stress management technique um, before I get into the special offer we have at the end. Um, so box breaths are basically when you breathe in for. We're going to start off with four seconds, just because if you're if you are a beginner out there, four seconds is a great place to start. You're going to inhale for four seconds. You're going to hold at the top for four seconds. You're going to exhale for four seconds. 
And then you're going to hold again at the bottom for four seconds. So that's why it's called box breaths. You've got four parts to it. The inhale, hold, exhale, hold. So if you like to practice, practice this with me, you're going to inhale for four, three, two, one. Hold for four, three, two, one. Exhale for four, three, two, one. Hold again for four, three, two, one. Inhale for four, three, two, one. Hold for four, three, two, one. Exhale for four, three, two, one. Hold for four, three, two, one. A couple more. Four, three, two, one. Hold for four, three, two, one. Exhale for four, three, two, one. Hold for four, three, two, one. Last one for four, three, two, one. Hold for four, three, two, one. Exhale for four, three, two, one. And hold for four, three, two, one. So if that was your first time, hopefully you enjoyed that. Um, and that may not have been enough to really get the effect, but if you were to do that for three minutes or even five minutes, uh, yes, Julie says nice. Um, it is amazingly effective at putting you into that rest and digest mode. And when you get good at it, you, you notice the difference. Um, I started out doing this for three minutes and then up to five. And now I, I can go all the way up to 20 minutes where I'm just practicing this breathing exercise. And when I'm, I, I'm gotten to the point now where I, I feel when that switch has, has triggered that parasympathetic nervous system, I've entered the rest and digest mode. I feel it. Um, and it, it's a great feeling because after that, I'm ready to take on the day. That's when I typically will actually get on the computer and start typing, start checking emails because now I'm, I'm more level-headed. So if I see something that's going to make me, you know, <laughs> go crazy, it probably is not if I've meditated. Oh, okay. So those are, that's the, the last activity I wanted to go over with you. And the last thing that I'm going to go over is for those of you that are trying to, you have a weight loss goal, you are trying to reach a goal. You are trying to lose some weight for the summer. We are, it is what, March 23rd when I'm recording this live. So we are, the, the summer's just right around the corner. It's like, hey, y'all, I'm almost here. So now is really the time to be focusing on weight loss if that's what, if you're trying to have that summer body, okay? Um, and so I do have a program that is available. I mentioned at the beginning, I'm a functional diagnostic nutrition practitioner. Um, and so I have a signature program that I'm going to share with you right now that you can take advantage of. Um, and it's basically a, a 90 day weight loss formula. So uh, it is very holistic. I'm all about treating the whole body, right? We are a whole person with a whole body, a whole mind, a whole spirit that all needs to be addressed with any type of protocol. Um, so this is the 90 day weight loss formula. Um, and the goal of this program is to help you lose up to 30 pounds, uh, restore your energy and heal your metabolism. These are the things that you have to look forward to after and during the 90 day weight loss formula. So as you can tell in the title, it is a 90 day or three month program. Um, and it's really just to get you kickstarted and to, so that by the end of this program, you know exactly what you need to do to not only lose the weight, but to keep it off. We're creating a lifestyle. This is not a quick fix. This is not a like, I'm gonna need to fit into my wedding dress tomorrow. This is not it. <laughs> but this is a 90 day program that's gonna show you exactly what you need to be doing. And one of the cool things about it, and my favorite part about it, is that we get down to the root cause of the weight gain. How many programs out there actually focus on the cause of the weight gain? Most of the programs out there are just Band-Aid fixes, right? They're trying to solve the problem um, without actually identifying the cause of the problem in the first place. And so um, to me, that just, that sounds bonkers. We had to figure out why you're gaining weight in the first place so that we can 
fix that issue, and then you don't have to worry about it coming back in the future. So again, we get down to the root cause of your weight gain so you can lose the unwanted weight and keep it off. Um, one of the cool things about me being an FDN practitioner is that I can help you run lab tests. So I'm not just going to give you a haphazard protocol that says, hey, try this diet and do this exercise, and you have no idea how that's going to affect you. Um, we actually take a very individualized approach. We do a very deep dive into your hormones and your metabolic health so we can determine what is going to be the right protocol for you. Some of the things that are in the program, let's go over the four pillars, kind of the four pillars that make up the program, the meat and potatoes. Um, and that is, can someone participate if they don't live near you? Absolutely. This is completely virtual. I'd love to make it in person at some point, but this is virtual. So you do not have to be, I'm in Moreno Valley. You do not have to be in Moreno Valley. This is all virtual. All of our one-on-one -on -one appointments and everything are virtual. That is the wonderful thing about it. Um, so the four pillars of the program are education. I am huge, huge, huge on education. Because um, again, I don't, I've done my job. If by the end of this program, you know what you need to do, not only just what you need to do, but you know why you're doing it. And you can even explain it to somebody else. And the reason why that's important is because when you don't have me in your on your phone or when you don't have me blowing you up like, hey, did you do this or did you do that? Or if you know that you don't have a schedule, a call scheduled with me in two weeks, you still need to know what you need to be doing for your health. And it doesn't always, it shouldn't always be coming from my mouth or it shouldn't always be just because Sinclair said so, right? You should know why. Oh, I'm doing this because it helps lower my cortisol levels. And me, you know, keeping my cortisol levels low can help me lose fat. You should know how that works. And so I'm a huge component, a proponent of these masterclasses. Um, I would, these biweekly masterclasses are shorter than this one that I've done right now. We'll usually cover like maybe one of these hacks would be like a masterclass. Um, and we do like a 30 minute kind of deep dive on this is why stress management is important, for example. Um, and so biweekly masterclasses are a part of the program so that again, you're getting this education as you're going through and losing the weight. You're, know, you're knowing and learning why you're doing the things you're doing. The second pillar is support. So not only will you get one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions um, with me, You'll get to answer your questions, uh, ask your questions. Um, you'll get to get a very individualized approach on, well, okay, well, I actually like to do this. So how can I incorporate blank? Um, I'm all about, you know, how to incorporate things into your lifestyle. I meet you where you're at rather than trying to force you and fit you into some kind of cookie cutter program. Um, and then you get a chat with me. Um, so we do have a chat feature. I'll get you set up on our on our app and you have a chat feature that you can use 24 seven. Um, now notice I said, you can use it 24 seven, give me a day to respond, <laughs> but you will have a chat feature so that whenever you have just random questions, if you're in the grocery store and you're like, oh my goodness, is this good for me? Should I be eating this? You can shoot me a quick chat and get your questions answered. Accountability is huge for weight loss for really any health goal, but especially for weight loss, because it's so easy to fall off the wagon. It's so easy to, you know, let yourself go for a meal and then that turns into a cheat day and that turns into a cheat week and et cetera, et cetera. So accountability is huge. So that's why we have an accountability group where each week you'll come in and say, this is my goal. And then at the end of the week, we'll be checking in with you to see how did that go. Um, and so part of the reason why we do this is to tap into that, that innate uh, you know, a uh, desire that we all have to be accepted by those around us. It's a part of our instinct, you know, instinctual nature. Um, so uh, my, my approach is just tap, let's tap into that. Let's use that to our advantage. Um, if we know that we, we should be working out, if we know that I should be taking a walk at least three times this week, then let me voice that to other people around me. Because the last thing I want to do at the end of the week is, is say, I did not do what I said I was going to do. Right. And you may have to do it once, you're probably not going to do it twice. Okay. So that's where the accountability comes in. And then resources. Uh, resources are everything else, all the extra support that I will provide you to make you, uh, to help you be successful. Um, and that is a weekly meal plan. 
Um, and this is not just random recipes thrown together. Uh, we One of the things we do is run a food sensitivity test. And so based on what comes back, right, if it says you're sensitive to soy, for me, I've learned I was sensitive to soybean, highly sensitive to soybean. So you would get custom recipes that don't include soy. Um, and it's, it's likely that you will likely have a list of sensitivities because that's just in society that that's where we're at, um, where most people are sensitive to multiple things. So I had a list of 23 things that I was sensitive to. Um, so what makes it really easy is I can say, okay, I want uh, recipes without any soy, without any wheat, without any cauliflower, because apparently I'm sensitive to cauliflower. Um, but yes, you'll get a custom meal plan that is, uh, again, custom to you and it's including ingredients that are going to be good for your body and it is not including ingredients that are not going to be good for your body. Because food sensitivities, if you're eating food that your body is intolerant to, um, it's going to be causing inflammation, which is going to be increasing cortisol levels. We already know that's bad for weight loss. And then lastly, a four-week workout plan. Um, so I do have one for at home and one for the gym, whatever suits your fancy, wherever you get your workout in, we got a four, a four week workout plan for you that includes some demo videos. Um, so these are the kind of the bones of the program um, that we have, the four pillars. Um, and I haven't even got to the best part yet, y'all. Y'all ain't ready for this. I haven't even got to the best part. And that is that this is actually being launched as a beta program. So if you're familiar with popular apps like Uber or Instacart or anything like that, most of them come to, they, they, they launch a beta, right? They get a kind of a small group of people together and they say, hey, try our app out, give us your feedbacks. Then they go back, they make all their changes and then they launch publicly. That's what I'm doing. So this is the beta. You're in this in exclusive group now where I'm saying like, hey, hey, psst, psst. Hey, hey, come here. I got this new program. I want you to help me make it the best weight loss program ever. So I'm launching it off a of beta. The great news for you is that I'm actually slashing the price 50% off of the regular price program that I would offer. Again, it's because you're getting in at the beginning and I know that your, your feedback is going to be very valuable for me and for everybody else who comes in the future. So as a thank you, I'm saying slash the price 50%. 50% off, 5-0, and um, that's, this is the lowest price that'll ever be offered, so it's definitely a, the great time to get in. So if you are at all interested in, in, in taking advantage of this beta program, and I'm telling you, get in right now before, before it's no longer beta, um, the, the, basically the next step is to book your discovery call or your qualifying call, and that's what we'll just have a quick discussion to make sure that you're right for the program, the program's right for you, um, you know, you're committed, all that fun stuff, and um, then we get started. Um, and so if you are interested, it was meant for me to log in today. It sure was, Julie. It sure was. This was, this is fate. That's what it is. Um, so if you are interested in this program, um, there's the link right there, queen to queen coaching.com. I'm actually also, if my computer will let me, going to put it in the chat for you. I'm going to put two links. So one is going to be to the queen to queen website. Um, that is the website where you can, boom, that is a website where you can, uh, learn a little bit more, more about me. I do have some packages on there. I'm going to be very transparent. I'm in the middle of updating those. So those are going to look, this beta program is kind of a hosh posh of the packages that you see on the website. Um, so I would say don't pay too much attention to those. Um, you can always go back to this after I send out the recording. But again, I'm going to go over this during our discovery calls. Um, so no need to um, worry about that. The second link I just dropped is for booking the discovery call. So if you're like, cool, I just want to book the discovery call, just go ahead and click on that link and it'll send you to a calendar where you can pick your time and set up a free 30 minute call. Again, where we'll just, we'll just chat and make sure that we are right for each other because I'm going to be very transparent with you if I think that this is not the right program for you because I don't want to just take your money and then you don't have success. That, what is that? That looks bad on me. I don't want to do that. Um, I want to make sure that this is actually going to be successful for you. So I'll be very upfront if I'm like, ah, I don't know that this is right for you. Um, so that's what the call was for. It's just to make sure that we are going to be right for each other. Okay. 
So again, this is the 90 day weight loss formula. It is launched as a beta program, which means I'm giving you 50% off right now. So make sure you go and put, ahead and book your discovery call. Okay. So that's everything that I had to share with you all today. I am so appreciative of you taking time out of your whatever day of the week it is when you're watching this. Um, it's been a blast, uh, you know, talking and nerding out with you. I mentioned my nickname is the health nerd. So every masterclass is a nerd out moment for me. So I appreciate y'all sticking around, especially if you're still listening. Uh, so thank you. If you want to keep in touch with me, you can follow me on Instagram at V with three E's health nerd. You can find the, uh, the program on Facebook, Queen, the number two Queen weight loss program. You can send me an email at coaching at truehealthforever.com. And you can also go to the website, which I had already dropped in the chat. That is queen, the number two queen coaching.com. Okay. And that's where you can find more information about the weight loss program. Okay. So again, thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, if you have any questions, even if you're watching this in the recording um, on YouTube, go ahead and drop a question in the comments. I will come back and answer it. Um, so definitely make sure, I wanna make sure you get your questions answered whether you're watching this live or recorded. So drop the question and we'll get back to it. Um, and join us next month for another free masterclass. We're gonna keep them coming. Let me know what topic you want discussed. What questions do you have about weight loss? And I'll cover it. So again, drop it in the chat, drop it in the comments on YouTube, and I will see that and we'll make it happen. So thank you again. My name is Sinclair, aka B Health Nerd. I hope you stay healthy. I hope you stay mentally wealthy. I hope you stay true and have a great rest of your evening.